Hello, welcome to ComSpark. Today we are in Columbus, Ohio. My name is Tracy Putoff, and I am on the executive host committee for ComSpark, and I will be the guest host for today. Today we are talking with Dr. Tanja Coverdale, glad I got that right, <laughs> Yes. who is the Chief Information Officer and Vice President of Information Technology at Central State University. Kind of a mouthful. <laughs> but um, thank you, Dr. Covdale, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Super oh, exciting. Wow. This is exciting. I, I haven't ever talked with a doctor who was a CIO, <laughs> so I think this is terrific. Um, so you're in this role at Central State. Yes. What is your vision for technology and innovation um, in your role at Central State? Great question and probably one that I can talk about forever, but I'll try to condense my answer. So just a little bit about Central State because it'll set the frame for the vision for technology and innovation. Central State University is one of two land-grant universities in the state of Ohio, and we are located in Wilberforce, Ohio, which is a rural area somewhat outside of Dayton, Ohio, not too far from here where we are in Columbus. And our focus at Central State University is on expanding our academics and research in the land grant arena. So that means STEM research, agricultural research, and when you're doing anything in higher education, especially now and today, technology and innovation plays a major role. So our vision for tech and innovation at Central State encompasses three areas. It encompasses the infrastructure, it encompasses academic program, and it also encompasses career pipelines. So my vision is always to, how can we take this small, medium-sized university in rural Ohio and make it the greatest university using technology? First, you have to build the infrastructure. So what we do is, we don't really necessarily benchmark on higher education. We benchmark on other industries that's really getting technology right. So I look at healthcare. I look at insurance, I'm looking at banking, I'm looking at just other large enterprise size technology and seeing how we can scale that down to work in Central State. And so some of the things that we've done is we have new state-of-the-art Wi-Fi and new, new network and new fiber optic backbone to be able to power everything and that's really been key to our growth. In terms of academics, using that platform to be able to deliver our curriculum, not only to our students on campus, but to virtual students anywhere. And so we're working on some major projects with where we are outfitting our classrooms with telepresence technology so that students can remote in and still have that same intimate central state experience, but from the convenience and comfort of their own location. So that's uh, another aspect of it. And finally, career pathways. I strongly believe, especially here in Central Ohio, where there's a large tech talent gap, the Central State can serve as a major resource to help fill that pipeline for new tech talent coming in. So utilizing and preparing the campus with all of these new technologies gives our students the environment in which they're immersed in all of these technologies every day, infused into their academic curriculum, and then begin to make those connections between the university and the industry who's in high demand for our talent. Wow, that is a lot. It's a lot time. for you to be in charge of. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> so you've got these three areas. Tell me about any like new exciting projects you're working on specifically in those areas. Especially, I'm, I'm really curious about the last one you said about the pathways, like how okay. we get, because um, we have this problem with tech um, employment everywhere. There's a huge gap. and. And I love the idea that you're working to, to get people out in, in that field. Tell me about the, I, the projects you're working on that, that, uh, in those three areas. Okay, no worries. This is a, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's too exciting. <laughs> so for, I'll start with our innovation education pathway, since that's the one that you uh, mentioned particularly. Being both an academic and a technologist, I'm lucky to be in both rooms where we have the academic saying, we need more people to hire our graduates. And we have the technologist saying, we don't have enough graduates. And I'm thinking, well, there's universities full of them. Why isn't the conversation happening that we are filling the need? So what's, what's happening now that we're trying to address is, we're graduating students that we hope that we're preparing in the way industry wants. And industry is waiting for us to graduate students that they hope we're preparing. So what I've done is open up the 
avenue or opening up the, the area for those conversations to happen. I have about eight to 10 Central Ohio, major Central Ohio organizations that we're now partnering with where they are working with us to redesign our curriculum to make sure that we're addressing specifically. So for example, if we have a computer science major, instead of just teaching them Java program because that's just what you're supposed to as the computer science professors, we're working on what this industry really wanna see. Is it Java on .NET? Is it Java on another platform? Or really getting that demand met. And with these companies, it's not all about, okay, now Central State, we've told you we want this technology, you figure it out. These companies have pledged resources, personal and human resources, technology resources to say, we know that we would like your students to know these technologies. We know that you're not currently teaching them. So we can work with you to bolster your faculty, or we can have faculty that will come and teach your students what we need them to know. And so right now we're designing these programs and they generally start in a junior year where students will have that academic preparation prior to an internship. So they're not walking in the door and now having to learn everything. They're walking in the door knowing exactly what this company wants. And they've been trained by this company. They have their internship and then maybe a co-op and then the goal is for all of these students to be hired by these specific companies that are signing up. So the wonderful thing that at Central State that we're doing is really just partnering and having these conversations. So that's really exciting. Another project I wanted to highlight is the Classrooms Without Walls. I touched on that briefly. But Classrooms Without Walls is our new project where we are outfitting about one third of our campus with new telepresence technology in our classrooms. And so what that allows us to do, because we are a rural university, it allows us to really spread our brand of Central State personalized, individualized, interactive, because our classes are really interactive. We have a low faculty to student ratio, but we can now expand our walls of the university to people all across Ohio, all across the Midwest, all across the United States who still want to have that affordable education. Central State is the most affordable of the 14 Ohio State universities. So now it's affordable and accessible. So maybe you can't come to Wilberforce to be on campus and maybe you are interested in one of our 33 majors that we have. You now can be able to log onto your phone, your mobile device, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop, whatever it is, and be right there with your classmates. It's kind of like FaceTiming your class. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, students today, that's what they're into. They love the technology. And, and you can play it back on demand to so say you had to work and you can't make class that day. You can go online and play back your class or even if you were there, your study, you can go back and pause it and see what they said. So it's like streaming your educational experience. And again, we, none of that would have been possible without the infrastructure. That's a lot. Yeah, we're like <laughs> futuristic. <That's interesting. laughs> so you mentioned a couple times that you're a rural university. Yes. Um, I believe you came from Brooklyn. Yes. Which is definitely not rural. Not rural at so, all. So um, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about how you how you got to be a C CIO? Uh -huh. Got yourself to the middle of Ohio, <laughs> which is okay. Obviously, yeah. you know what what did you attribute that to? Like how did what was your road like, and and what if somebody else wanted to try to get to a CIO? How did you do it? Wow. So, you know, some days, actually, when I was driving in through cornfields today, <laughs> I'm like, how did I get here? It's, it's still kind of surreal for me, although I've been here a little over two years. And yes, I am from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. You don't hear the accent because, well, it's, it's gone by now. But my road to CIO was a little bit different than most. I did mention that I'm both an academic and a technologist. So I have three academic degrees and they're all in IT. So academically, as a researcher and as a professor, I've focused on IT theories, I've focused on emerging technologies, I've just throughout the confluence of how technology has evolved in the last 20 years. So I've been on the forefront of that, but I've always made it a point to remain a practitioner because I always felt that I couldn't go research or teach my class technologies that I read in a book. You know how it is. By the time it's printed in a book, it's like so old. So I always stayed working as well in, in many consulting arenas. And, and at one point I was in the Virgin Islands 
which is a whole other story for oh, another wow. interview. But while I was in the Virgin Islands, I was the president and CEO of their territorial broadband uh, initiative. So I designed a 100% fiber optic network to cover the entire territory. And so I kind of go in and out and, and that is what I think makes me so happy that every day I get to be a CIO in higher ed because I get to mix my love for academics and my love for technology and not only just building cool networks, because of course I build a cool network, but also how are we changing lives like with the pathways? We're, we're changing Central Ohio, we're changing people's lives, we're giving technologists access to a world that they may not necessarily have access to you know, based on wherever they're, they're from or just not having the match of academic programs. And so just being able to change lives through technology is, is, is my love and how I kind of came to be in this role. So the three things I would say that I attribute my ability to be successful in this role you know, there was a, a book a long time ago that said um, everything I needed to know about life I learned in kindergarten. Well, I would call my 2019 Kindle edition everything I needed to know about being a CIO I learned in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing I would say is grit. Grit, determination, and mental toughness. You know, I call it like the New York forget about it. You know, that's a thing. <laughs> so if you ever saw any movies, like that right. is a, it's a mindset where when you are a CIO, you're often going to be on, in the forefront of things that other people don't buy into yet. But you can't let that deter you. You have to still be very steadfast and very committed and determined and have that grit and intensity to get it done no matter what. No matter what you have to go through, no roadblock is too thick, no obstacle is too large. Like You've got to be just that New York City grit. I would say my second thing I would attribute it to is passion. So if you've ever met New Yorkers, we're very animated, right? You're just, no, New Yorkers are not kind of quiet and wildfires. We're like, yeah, yeah, this is gracious, I guess. And um, that's important because when you're looking, when you're working with users, you've got to get them to buy in. Because again, they're trusting you. And if you say, yes, this technology is great, they're going to go, okay. But if you're like, it's going to change your life, it's going to revolutionize your business, you're gonna, they're going to at least listen, right? <laughs> so that's one thing. And then I would say, that I would call the third one, um, Bright Lights, Big City, which is dreaming big. When you're a CIO, you cannot have a small mind. You have got to make something out of nothing. And you have to be able to dream so big where people think you're crazy, and you probably are, and that's what makes you great. Like all innovators are kind of, you know, they're different just because we're thinking outside of the box. And you've got to have those big dreams because innovators, CIOs push organizations to the next level. And if you're not willing to go outside the confines of what you already know, what your organization already knows, then you will not be able to move it forward. So those will be the three things that I would recommend, grit, passion, and dreaming big. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Coverdale, for joining us Thank you. today. And for more information about this, you can find us at comspark.tech.